Hi, in this lesson, lesson 2.5, I want to introduce you to the standard way of evaluating the performance of a machine learning algorithm, which is called cross-validation. So a couple of lessons back, we looked at evaluating on an independent test set, and we also talked about evaluating on the training set. Don't do that. And uh, we also talked about evaluating using the holdout method by taking the one data set and holding out a little bit for testing and using the rest for training. There's a fourth option on Weka's classify panel, which is called cross-validation. And that's what we're going to talk about here. Cross-validation is a way of improving upon repeated holdout. We tried uh, using the holdout method with different uh, random number seeds uh, each time, and uh, that's a repeated holdout. Uh, Cross-validation is a systematic way of doing repeated holdout that actually improves upon it by reducing the variance of the estimate. So, you know, we take a training set and we create a, uh, a classifier and then we're looking to evaluate the performance of that classifier and there's a certain amount of variance in that evaluation because it's all statistical underneath. And we want to keep the variance in the estimation as low as possible. So cross-validation is a way of reducing the variance and a variant on cross-validation called stratified cross-validation uh, reduces it even further. Now, I'm going to explain that in this class. So, uh, in a previous lesson, we held out 10% for testing, and we repeated that 10 times. That's the repeated holdout method. So we got one data set, and we divided it independently 10 separate times into training and uh, training set and a test set. Now, with cross-validation, we divide it just once, but we divide it into, say, 10 pieces. And then we take nine of the pieces and use them for training, and the last piece and use it for testing. And then with the same division, we take another nine pieces and use them for training, and the held out piece for testing. And we do the whole thing ten times, using a different segment for testing each time. So in other words, we divide the data set into ten pieces, and then we hold out each of these pieces in turn, for testing, train on the rest, do the testing, and average the results, average the 10 results. That would be 10-fold cross-validation. Divide the data set into 10 parts. These are called folds. Hold out each part in turn, average the results. So each data point in the, uh, in the data set is used once for testing and nine times for training. That's 10-fold cross-validation. Stratified cross-validation is a simple variant where when we do the initial division into 10 parts, we ensure that each fold has got approximately the correct proportion of each of the class values. Of course, there's many, many, many different ways of dividing a data set into 10 parts, 10 equal parts. Uh, we just make sure we choose a division that has approximately the right representation of class values in each of the folds. That's stratified cross-validation, and it helps reduce the variance in the estimate a little bit more. Then, once we've done the cross-validation, what Weka does is run the algorithm an 11th time on the whole data set, and that would then produce a classifier that we might deploy in practice. So we use tenfold cross-validation in order to get an, an evaluation result, an estimate of the error, and then finally we do classification one more time to get an actual classifier to use in practice. So that's what I wanted to tell you. Cross-validation is better than repeated holdout, and we'll look at that in the next lesson. Stratified cross-validation is even better. Weka does stratified cross-validation by default. Uh, and uh, with tenfold cross-validation, Weka invokes the learning algorithm 11 times, one for each fold of the cross-validation, and then a final time on the entire data set. A practical rule of thumb is that if you've got lots of data, you can use a percentage split and evaluate it just once. Otherwise, if you don't have too much data, you should use stratified tenfold cross-validation. How big is lots? Well, this is what everyone asks. How long is a piece of string? You know, it's, uh, it's hard to say, but it depends on a few things. So uh, it depends on the number of classes in your data set. If you've got a two-class data set, 
Then if you had uh, say 100 to 1000 uh, samples, data points, that would probably be good enough for a pretty reliable evaluation. So if you did 90%, uh, 10% split in the training and test set, if you had say 10,000 data points in a two-class problem, then I think you'd have lots and lots of data. You wouldn't need to go to cross-validation. If on the other hand you had 100 different classes, then that's different, right? You would need a larger data set because you want a fair representation of each class when you do the evaluation. So it's really hard to say exactly, it depends on the circumstances, but if you've got thousands and thousands of data points, you might uh, just do things once with a holdout. Uh, if you've got less than a thousand data points, uh, even with a two-class problem, then you might as well do tenfold cross-validation. It doesn't really take much longer. Well, it takes ten times as long, but the times are generally pretty short. You can read more about this in section 5.3 of the course text on cross-validation. And now it's time for you to go and do the activity associated with this class. See you soon.